Today on Geek Thought, I check out some Marvel Now number ones and see if they're actually worth taking a look at. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Geeked Out. I'm Steven and like I said, today we're going to be looking at some Marvel Now number ones. Uh, I've been trying to get into the Marvel Now universe and trying to like, you know, get a lot of number ones and see if they're worth reading or anything like that. And if you guys didn't see my other review, I checked out the um, Young Avengers and the Uncanny, Uncanny X-Force. So if you guys want to check those out, you guys can feel free to do that. I have a read for those two. But um, today we're going to be talking about some four new ones or not really new but four number ones that I haven't reviewed yet and before I get into that I want to make sure you guys know about the contest that I have going on um, I have a comic book giveaway happening right now so if you guys are interested make sure you guys go over there and check it out um, it's a pretty cool giveaway I'm giving away five or three to five prizes depending on how many people join um, go check it out and let me know what you guys think um, but let's get started into the review and all right, so let's get into the review. And the first comic book that I'm going to be reviewing today is The Indestructible Hulk, number one from Marvel Now. So the first thing I noticed right off the bat about The um, Indestructible Hulk, number one, was that the artwork was a little bit different. Um, it was okay artwork, nothing special. Uh, it kind of looked like they were using a lot of watercolors in it. Uh, it felt kind of like bland and the, car the colors were all fading away. And it had a very unique style to it. But, I don't know, it just didn't really suck me in the way I wanted it to. The, the artwork was just not there. Um, it's written by uh, Mark Wade, And if you guys don't know, Mark Wade is an incredible, incredible writer. He's given us a bunch of great comic books out there. And he's just, he's a great writer and he knows how to write great things. The problem with this one is that, although he gives us some okay writing in this, it's not great. It's not the best thing we've ever seen from him. And... Although I do like the way it transitions onto the, the page, the colors on the page and the way the panels are laid out really did throw me off. Um, it's an interesting take on the Hulk and it's pretty much the Hulk is meeting um, Maria Hill at a diner. And that is pretty much a lot of the comic book is I'm at the diner and the Hulk saying what he wants to do pretty much for the future and Maria Hill wants to turn him in and all that and it's pretty much their back and forth about where they're gonna go from here and it has an okay ending the ending was good enough to make me want to keep reading um, it wasn't bad it wasn't great but it did make me want to keep reading but due to the coloring and the panels and everything and although the writing was done still very well it wasn't Mark Wade's best I'm gonna give the Indestructible Hulk number one a 2.5 out of 5 on my Geek Out score because it's good, not great. It's about average, nothing special here, but it is something different with the Hulk and it is definitely worth checking into if you are a fan of the Hulk. And even if you're not, if you're not a fan of the Hulk, it's still something that you should go check out and see if maybe this is what gets you to become a fan of the Hulk. It is an interesting take on the Hulk. So I do recommend it, but just on a lower level. So I'm going to give it a 2.5. Alright guys, so the next comic book that I'm going to be reviewing for you guys is Cable and the X Force, and it is another number one from Marvel Now. And here's my review. So when it comes to Cable and the X Force, I only got into this because I read the um, Uncanny X Force, and they said that there was a tie-in with the um, Cable and the X Force. So I really just read it because of that. I don't know anything about Cable or this team of the X Force, but after reading this, I gotta say I don't really care if I know anything about them. Uh, the artwork in this was. It was okay. I mean, it wasn't like the Hulk where it was watercolor, but it wasn't. There wasn't a lot of detail to me. The characters felt really weird and bland. Um, it's written by Dennis Hopeless, and I know I could take a shot here, but I'm not going to. But it's an interesting take. But I have to say that there's a, there's too much going on in this in this comic book. You don't know what's happening. Uh, there's a lot of jumping around, a lot of um, separate stories. I don't know if it expects you to know about what's happened in the past but if it is I don't know what's happened in the past and this thing does not do a great job of catching you up it, I all I know is that the story jumped around the pacing was really really bad 
I feel that confusing stuff just happens in this in this comic book, but it doesn't. It's just confusing for the hell of it. it doesn't really explain anything. And then the only cool thing I guess is Cable's character is a bit of a badass, which he's always been. I, I've seen him in the in the cartoons and everything. He's always been a badass, but here he has something wrong with his arm, and his arm he's trying to like get it to be more powerful or something, and. I don't really know what the plot is. It was really hard to follow. I just know that Cable is pretty much killing people and he's being chased by Captain America and some other guy. And the story is just, it's really all over the place. And it leaves me with a confusing, confusing ending that wasn't satisfactory. So for that reason, I have to give Cable and the X-Force number one a 1.5. I don't give it a one because it's some, there's something there. I think there's something deep inside it's there. They just have to figure out the pacing and do something there to just make it readable. This one, this comic was almost unreadable, but it was readable, it's just almost unreadable. So, and for that reason, I'm going to give it a 1.5 out of 5 on my Geeked Out score. So the next comic book that I'm going to be taking a look at is the new Iron Man number one from Marvel Now. Now the new Iron Man number one is written by Kieran Gillian, I believe, and she is the same person that wrote The Young Avengers. And I actually enjoyed The Young Avengers, so I was actually a little bit excited about reading the Iron Man, you know, the Iron Man comic book. But when I was started reading it, uh, it was interesting to take on Iron Man. There was some really interesting artwork, nothing great. Uh, it felt really, really glossy, like the, the um, way it was painted on it just felt really glossy really over the top with the coloring and I, I personally did not enjoy that coloring it didn't completely take me out of it but it did take me out of it a little bit the one thing that I think did work very well in this comic book was the pacing I felt that the comic book was paced very well it um the story here is pretty much that Iron Man he is back on the town flirting with a bunch of girls sleeping around doing all this thing when he has a phone call from an person that he used to know and pretty much she's saying that she's dead and it's uh, some weird voicemail thing that she left and she she is dead and Iron Man is just trying to get back in the mist because they are bringing there's a new evil coming to town and Iron Man is just trying to get it together and figure out a way to stop it which is like what Iron Man always does but the thing that does kind of work is the fact that he does show some human emotions at points in this comic book and I really enjoy that. It's nice seeing him that he's not a douchebag and all that. Uh, the thing that didn't work was the action scenes weren't drawn very well. They weren't executed well. We just keep hearing what he's thinking in his brain because he doesn't seem to say it out loud. So it's, it's really odd. I don't know. It's It threw me off a little bit. But the Iron Man number one is still a really good read and it is actually worth pursuing because the ending Although not completely satisfactory, there was a twist that kind of, not really a twist, there was something at the end that just made me want to read the next one. So I'm going to give the Iron Man number one a 3 out of 5 on my Geek Talk score. So the comic book that I'm going to be reviewing today is the Fantastic Four number one from Marvel Now. So the first thing I noticed when reading the Fantastic Four number one was that it had some really, really good artwork. Uh, the use of shading in this thing was actually done really well. I like the way that they used the shading to embrace the other colors. It to me really worked very, very well. Uh, it's a different approach to the Fantastic Four, I believe. It's really, really more family oriented in the approach that I believe it's going in. Um, the first thing we get in this comic book is that we see the Fantastic Four fighting back in time because they have a, a time machine that took them there and their son who was named I believe is Franklin he wakes up from a nightmare wanting his mother to be there but his mother is not there and we kind of get their relationship of them not being there for their kids uh, and Reed trying to fix things always like he always does and it's an interesting take we're getting a really good family oriented type of Fantastic Four but a thing that kind of really took me out of it was that it did not do a good job in showing what was happening right then and there. I believe that you have to know the past to know about this number one. I mean, this is the number one, but yet there's a lot of people who, there's a lot of story elements here that we don't really get answers to. It's just kind of thrown in and like if we're supposed to know what's actually happening here. And we don't know if we have never read a Fantastic Four or have even caught up to Fantastic Four. So it did throw me off and it took a while for me to actually start to like figure out what's going on with the characters and where they are in their lives. And it's got some comedic moments from Johnny Storm, so 
that's pretty cool but it's just I kind of wish they would have like eased us in more with the characters one thing I actually really, really hated in this comic book was the way they made the thing be completely dumb. He really, really is dumb in this thing and they make him just be ignorant and stupid and I really did not like that. I know that Ben is like not the smartest but they made him be completely useless in this and it really, really did take me out of it. I wish they wouldn't have did that with him. But other than that, I think it's an okay read but you do have to know about the characters. If you don't know about the characters, you will be lost. You have to do your research and catch up with them. The ending was unsatisfactory but it was interesting because it has some family Robinson adventure aspects to it that I feel that's the route they're going to take which could be pretty cool with them going on a trip with all the kids and Ben and Johnny. I mean it could be fun, it could be pretty cool but I'm not sure yet so for that reason I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 5 on my Geek Out score just because if you are a fan you will love this you'll probably eat it up but if you are not a fan and you don't know what's going on it will take you out of it and it will take a while to get you back in. Um, Alright guys, thanks for watching my comic book review. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I pretty much have my contest going up right now. Uh, if you guys don't know about the contest, just click on the link. Make sure you guys check them all out. Um, also, check out my other reviews. And remember, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you actually read any of these. I would be really interested if you actually checked these out. Um, I... There wasn't a great one in the bunch, but if you guys found one great, let me know what you guys think below. Comment, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.